I was chowing down a ham bagel sandwich while running for the gate. I got onto the flight and after struggling to get my seatbelt buckled, suddenly I felt like I couldn't breathe. I thought it was a one-off fluke, but these I can't breathe episodes kept happening again and again for years. Okay, let me explain from the beginning what led me here and how this rock bottom experience actually taught me the one weight loss lesson that could have saved me eight years and $17,000 spent on programs and medical bills. A $17,000 lesson that ultimately saved my life and helped me reach and maintain my lowest weight and body fat percentage since. You see, I grew up believing that you can achieve anything if you work hard enough for it. I lived and breathed academics. There was no subject I couldn't master, no hoop I couldn't jump through to get the test result I want or into the university program of my dreams. I loved that feeling of achievement. Life was good and health was the last thing I felt I needed to worry about. It also didn't help that every adult around me was overweight too. So I figured that's what would happen to me too. I made peace with that inevitability. And yet when it happened, I wasn't ready. I remember I was shopping with my best friend at Forever 21, taking a size two white v-neck shirt off the shelf, walking into the changing room and finding myself struggling to fit. I remember staring at myself in the mirror with the shirt bunched up around my shoulders and one arm awkwardly hanging up in the air thinking, how could this not fit? I didn't buy anything that day. I made my way home and Googled how to lose weight. And the first thing that popped up was something called the GM diet. I lasted one and a half days on it. Looking back, this makes sense because it's essentially a starvation diet, but I didn't know that back then. Instead, I blamed myself for my lack of willpower. I just need to try harder, I thought. After all, working hard got me through so much in life. How is weight loss any different? But alas, my body wasn't a machine. Despite my best attempts, I couldn't handle the ups and downs of falling off and getting back on diets again and again, and decided this was time to outsource the problem to an expert. You see, there were two things I learned growing up. Either you work really hard to get what you want, or you can outsource your problems to an expert. I figured if I can't do something myself, I'd get someone to tell me what to do and hold me accountable to it. I hired a personal trainer who ignored the diet completely and instead put me on an intense weight loss strength and cardio regimen. I remember in one session, she kept yelling, summer arms, summer arms at me. Panting like a St. Bernard in 100 degree weather, I thought, who wants summer arms? What even are summer arms? The next day after summer arms boot camp, I felt so sore I could barely walk downstairs. Yet weirdly, that made me want to go back and do more. I mean, no pain, no gain, right? If I felt this terrible after a workout, it must be working. I felt I was on the right track. Until seven weeks in. My sessions with my personal trainer would scare the crap out of me, literally. The thought of what I'd be putting my body through for the next hour had me running for the bathroom 15 minutes before every single session. On top of that, my weight loss results were disproportionately minimal compared to the Herculean effort I was putting in. Finally, the hard hitting exercises of HIIT banged up my knees so bad that I could no longer walk up the hilly streets of Seattle and had to take a break from exercise altogether. At my breaking point, I thought, this can't possibly be worth it until my world got flipped upside down on a fateful flight from Seattle to Boston and this is how we got to this point from earlier me chowing down a ham bagel sandwich while running for the gate getting onto the flight and suddenly feeling like I couldn't breathe when I landed in Boston still miraculously alive I figured that was a one-off fluke but then these I can't breathe episodes kept happening again and again for years. I felt sick and helpless. I no longer saw weight loss as just another vanity metric to achieve like an A in school. I was in it for lifelong health and the ability to live a limitless life, to hike and see the off the beaten parts of the world that only someone fit and healthy can do. I didn't want to just like how I looked. I wanted to like my life. Now, some background. I went to school for engineering and was working at Microsoft at the same time. So it had become ingrained in me to take a systematic analytical approach to problems. I don't think it is the best approach for every problem, not to mention it can be quite laborious. So I only employ it for really serious problems. And this qualified as the mother of all serious problems. I looked at the cycle with new somber eyes. And the first thing I decided was I'm not going to tell myself stories that don't serve me. How does it benefit me to think that weight loss had to be painful to succeed? What do I gain from believing that being fit means sacrificing taste and the ability to walk uphill? 
Once I removed the distracting beliefs that didn't serve me, I was left seeing only what I know to be the simple truth, that in order to lose weight, I need to eat fewer calories than I burn. How I get there doesn't matter as long as I can keep doing it sustainably. And this involves doing the right things at the right time. Sure, intense exercise can help me burn more calories, but if my joints weren't able to handle that kind of intensity, it's not the right thing for me to do at this stage in my journey. And this is the most tragic mistake people make, doing the right things at the wrong time. So this time, instead of jumping straight back into intense hit again, I asked myself, what if it doesn't have to feel hard? Here's where the magic happened. When I asked this question, possibilities started opening up for me. I didn't have to exercise beyond my limits or starve myself to lose weight. I just needed to eat a little less than I burned and that's it. So I committed to tracking everything I ate, noticed what foods tend to contribute most to my calorie intake and start reducing those one at a time, not all at once. In engineering, we call this tackling the bottleneck problem first. For instance, I found my highest calorie foods, aka my bottlenecks, were Coke and pizza. Off the two, at least pizza kept me more satiated and satisfied than Coke, so I decided to reduce my Coke consumption. Yes, I could have reduced pizza too. In fact, at this stage in my life, I could have upgraded hundreds of different things about my nutrition. But rather than trying to revamp my entire diet, which historically led to burnout, I focused just on reducing my Coke intake by one can a day at a time, then eventually replacing it completely with something less caloric. Then I went to tackle my next bottleneck, pizza. I didn't see fast weight loss initially, but over time, small consistent changes like this put me back in a calorie deficit such that I started to see small consistent progress. And it felt easy. Until it didn't. After removing Coke, pizza, desserts, etc., and replacing them with a healthier diet for a few months, I felt myself inexplicably slipping back into old habits. Pizza started showing up at my doorstep again. Junk food somehow made it into my mouth instead of my usual dinners. And neglected vegetables wilted in my fridge, despite my having every intention to prepare them just a week prior. What happened? If people's most tragic mistake is doing the right thing at the wrong time, then their most tragic reality is knowing the right things to do, but not being able to do it. See, at this time, I had just joined the Microsoft Cortana team. I had never held a consumer facing position before. And so naturally I was terrified of doing a poor job. The anxiety of being found an imposter caused me to prioritize work over everything else. In fact, I was so worried about this that I'd often ignore hunger pangs in favor of getting one last thing done, then binge on whatever quick snack I can find when I got home instead of preparing an actual meal. If no munchies were available, I'd simply reunite with my long lost love again. Pizza. Whereas in the past, I chalked this up to lack of willpower and tried to overcompensate by putting myself back on a starvation diet. This time, I decided to ask myself once again, what if this doesn't have to feel hard? How can this be easy? So I committed to making it easier for myself to get work done by removing distractions. I installed apps to prevent me from checking my phone until after work. I would even turn my phone on airplane mode and leave it in a closed drawer, out of sight, out of mind. Then I installed another app called timeout on my computer to block my screen at the end of the workday so that I wouldn't keep working past the point of diminishing returns. Next is setting up my environment to maximize my chances of eating healthy, even in the case that I did work over time again. Other than my favorite brand of dark chocolate, I got rid of all other snacks from my house. I told myself that if I really wanted something, I could let myself have it, but only after taking a 15 minute walk to the nearest grocery store to pick it up. In their place, I filled my fridge and freezer with pre-prepped meals, high in protein and vegetables. Either I'd bulk cook food ahead of time and freeze them, or if I didn't have time for even that, I'd buy frozen packaged foods from Trader Joe's. Yes, it's packaged food, but what's better for you? Trader Joe's shiitake mushroom chicken or chips? When I set my environment up to support me instead of work against me, weight loss started feeling easier again. If there's one thing I wish I knew, it's that more pain is not always better. Sometimes the easier solution is the more effective one. And this way of thinking about not just weight loss, but any area of self-improvement has changed my life. After seven years of being stuck, I reached my dream body within a year and have maintained it without tracking for eight years now. I used to hate eating healthy and dreaded exercise. Now I regularly enjoy healthy meals, plus the occasional slack and climbing up to beautiful places I could never reach before. I used to burn out all the time from overworking. I haven't crashed into burnout in a long time now, making room for other hobbies and creative projects. 
But caution, while I eventually achieved my dream body, it was not without one final mistake along the way. A mistake that most of us trying to lose weight have made at one point or another. It's what makes you look like this after losing weight instead of this. This dreaded skinny fat stage can sneak up on you without you even realizing it until it's too late if you only focus on weight loss and don't pay attention to where that weight loss is coming from. So there's two things you can do at this point. One, if you want a tried and tested proven system that teaches you how to not just lose weight, but the right kind of weight, then check out the free sneak peek into my Badass Body Boss program in the comments and description below. Or if you want to DIY it, then you don't want to ignore this video where I go over the top skinny fat mistakes I wish I had avoided so you don't end up in the same place I and many others ended up in. So check it out here. And always remember, you can do it.